All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 132 scale Forces of Valor German Tank Destroyer. And this is die cast. There's a ton of detail that they put into this model. They also included some really cool accessories. So stay tuned, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing. All right, so we'll start with the packaging. Again, Forces of Valor does an amazing job. This is actually just a sleeve that goes over the box. And then on the top here, we actually have more information, a little history of this tank destroyer. It's also called, um, I know I'm not pronouncing this right, but it looks like it's Jag Tiger. If I'm saying it wrong, go ahead and correct me in the comments. I'm probably mispronouncing it, so <laughs> I am aware. But you can see here, this is made of metal die cast, the top part here. You can actually take the engine out. It does come with a base, and it's kind of showing you the camo scheme and how the wheels work. Again, tons of information there. And then you just slide this sleeve off. And then here's the tank. Really cool how they did the background image as well. And you can see the accessories in the back. All right, and when we open it up, looks like we have instruction manual here. And there we go. All right, so we'll start with the instruction manual. Just breaks down how to install the parts. Very good detail and I love how they have good images and graphics showing where they go and how to install. All right, and then you wanna remove, the barrel has this little cover on it, keep it safe from shipping. And you just slide it over like that. Great job with the packing, making sure it ships safe. And man, this looks good already. Okay, so to get it off the base, you need to unscrew these four screws right here. Make sure you are holding it on the other side. There we go. And there it is off the stand, but you still need to remove these two screws here. All right, there we go. And then the tracks look pretty good. They do move freely. Doesn't have independent suspension, but they all move really well. Let me give you a close up there. They do sell metal tracks, but I don't think there is a metal track set for this specific model. I know they have one for the Tiger Tank, which I will be reviewing in the future. So it looks really good. Just a quick little overview. Feels solid. I mean, that is all metal up here. Of course, some of these doors are plastic and then this bottom part's plastic. You can see Forces of Valor Walterson's. And I love the paint job, even on the bottom here, looks like some oil spill. The attention to detail is amazing on these models. And you can see the barrel does move up and down and also side to side, not much, but just a little bit like the real tank. And this is a metal barrel, by the way. It feels really solid. All right, now we're gonna get to the accessories. So they were glued on to the back in this little case. You have to remove them like this, which is a little bit of a shame because you can't keep the image in the background like some of these models. You could actually leave it displayed and use the background image, but this one you can't because you have to rip it off the back. But I love all the details they put in their accessories as well. Okay, so first off, Right here, we actually have the engine stand. And you can take the engine out of this model. I'll show you all that in a little bit. And you can put it on the stand if you want. And I love the weathering too. I mean, this is plastic, but it looks like it's metal, which is awesome. Go ahead and take the tank commander out. Lots of detail in the face. Even has a gun here. I love the paint they did. This one actually looks realistic. Some of the models don't look as realistic, but this one looks really good. All right, it also comes with two tow cables, which they're taped together, so I'll get those off in a little bit. All right, and this is what would actually lock the barrel in place when they were traveling. And it looks like it's metal, but it's actually plastic. So again, good job on the weathering. Not 100% sure what this is. All right, and then we have some extra tracks and also the tow clevises that go on the front and the back of the tank. And these will be mounted on the side. So first we're gonna install the extra tracks that it came with. And they hook down on this right here, these little arms. Kind of push them on, and then you slide them down. Like that. We're going to install all four of them. Okay. 
Okay, and I did want to point out, you push them in pretty hard. I mean, they, they feel like they're on, but they're not all the way. And then you have to slide them down. So you actually have to push it down to be able to fit on top of it. Same thing for the other side. And they're all installed now, and it looks really good. All right, now we're gonna install, I don't know what this is called exactly, but it's what locks the barrel in place. And you just push it into these slots right there. Like that. And it kind of snaps in. Helps always when you move it like that a little bit. But when they were traveling, this would open up. That would lock up like that. The barrel would sit down in a spot like this. And then this would clamp over it to hold the barrel in place. So when it hit bumps and stuff, the barrel wouldn't go all over the place. Okay, so for the tow cables and the tow clevises, you just push it in like this. And then you just slide it through like this. And then now you're ready to go on that one. I go ahead and do it on both sides just because it makes it a little easier. And these are actually plastic um, clevises, but they look metal again. And then these are rubber, but they feel like, like metal rope, which is crazy. Like it actually feels like a metal rope with uh, actual paint too. Really good detail. My hands are all black from the rope. Must be from the paint, a little better view. And they even look, look like it's weathered right here, a little rusted. Okay, so for the front toe clevises, there's a hole there and a hole there in the frame. And then you just pop it on like that. And then you run it to the back. It just runs along the side. And you can actually manipulate this toe cable. It is rubber, but it's like a stiff rubber, so it'll actually hold in place. And then the back one just clamps onto there. And you also, I don't know if you see my other videos, but I showed you this UV glue that you put a little dab of it, it's really clear. And you could set the cable where you want it, like up here, down there, and then you just put a dab right there and then you hit it with the UV, with the light, UV light and it'll hold it and you'll never even see the glue. There's the tow cables installed, looks really good. And you could even set this up if you wanted to, have like another tank behind it and have these tow cables hooked onto the front of the other tank. Because Forces of Valor, a lot of their models do have actually have tow hooks like this one you could make it wrap around there, or you could do another tow clevis on the other model, and it would look really cool. And this gun right here doesn't actually move, and it is rubber, but it looks really good still. And then you can see the periscope here and here, and these hatches actually do open on both sides. They're supposed to twist out and pop up. I'll show you in a second. The instruction manual, you can see here, they're supposed to slide onto the side and pop up. I'm gonna mess around with it in a little bit and see if I can get it to pop up. I just don't wanna break it. All right, so for the gun, it has this little spot right here and it just pops in to this, like that, and it does swivel up and down. And the gun is installed right here and it slots into there. Like that. Really cool. And this is what it could look like if you wanted to put the commander on the gun. Okay, so earlier we were talking about the engine and you can actually take it off. This is the engine door. So you lift that up and there's a lot of good detail in this engine as well. I'll show you that in a little bit. Unfortunately, these hatches do not open. I wish they did. Um, I also reviewed the Sturm Tiger and in the Sturm Tiger, these doors opened because it was an inside out version. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out in the link below. Um, also, this it was the inside out version. So there was actually a crew that went inside and you could leave the top off and see it. I wish they did that with this version. All right, and the antenna. I believe this is the radio antenna. Pops in right there. Okay, so this last piece here looks like an antenna, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it out and you're gonna install it onto this. And in the instructions, it shows you what to do. You bend them up 60 degrees and you install it right here and you push this brass part down on top right there. If you know what this is, shoot me a message in the comments. And it does have this little plastic piece that you have to take off like a cover. And I'm gonna cut this out with an X-Acto knife. All right, so I got it off. I'm gonna install it now. By the way, I think this has to be from the paint on the tank because my hands are not this dirty before I started doing this. <laughs> to install it, you're just gonna push it on. You're supposed to push it all the way up to right there. See if I can do it. I'm gonna twist it a little bit. 
Okay, well, y'all get to see me use the glue again. I was talking about the UV glue because this little top part just snapped off. Okay, so I got it on there a little bit. Now I'm just shining the UV glue on it. It's going to create like a layer, almost like a plastic weld. We'll see how good this does. And then I'm going to go over it with black. And I'm actually doing the same thing with the bottom brass piece here because it was a little flimsy and it didn't stay secure. So I put that on and now it doesn't move. There we go. So you can't barely tell that I fixed that. That's pretty good, honestly. I think the JB Weld stuff worked better, but anyways, to install it, you just push it down right here. And there you go. I love that little brass piece. Makes it feel higher quality. Okay, so I'm also gonna show y'all how it looks if you put some of this glue down. So I think I'm gonna put it like right here. I'm just gonna line it just a little bit right there on the top. You could see it now, but what I like to do is kind of hold it up against there. Push it against it like that. And it does look a little shiny right here, but I have this stuff from Tamaya that actually has rust and makes it look like rust that I'm gonna apply in a little bit to make it look a little more flat. So it comes with this little brush or two brushes, but I use a Q-tip. Just makes it a little easier. Get a little bit of the rust on there. And you could get some of the soot as well if you want to mix it. Just kind of go over the shiny parts. And there you go. Looks much better. And you can even play around with it like that. Okay, and I do not recommend this stuff, guys. It doesn't hold very well. I've already had to apply it twice again. So go with the JB Weld stuff I mentioned in my other video, but it does look good. All right, and I actually added some black soot around the barrel here, so it kind of looks like it's actually been fired. So this stuff's pretty cool if you haven't used it before. And I even added some rust there on top there so you can't see that as much, and then there where the glue was, you can barely see it. This is the commander's hatch. You just pop it open like that. Not a lot of detail inside, but it's not all white. Looks like there's some black soot added, like right here too, which is pretty cool. And then you just slide him in. Just kind of have to watch his feet. He fits actually really good right there. That's a really good fit. So I really like that soldier. It's probably the, it's probably my favorite commander I've seen in figure from Forces of Valor. Yep, looks good. All right, so to remove the engine, if you want to display it on the stand, you have these screws right here that you need to remove. Okay, and a heads up, you will need to remove these two front toe clevises because the base comes off and this comes with it. All right, let me just pull it off like this. And you can see that's all metal. This is all metal. All right, and here's the engine. Look at that detail. That is really good. I mean, you can't even see this part. So you just pop the engine out like this. Man, I am super impressed. Every time I do a new Forces of Valor Waltersons, they impress me. I'm gonna put some soot on this as well because I don't like it. It's too clean to me. All right, so I had a little bit of soot there. Some rust on the sides, rust right there. You can see, I mean, this thing was brand new looking, so I just made it a little rusty, like it's awesome combat. <laughs> My preference, but you also have these two little tabs right there and there, and then this hole, which are gonna line up with these tabs in there. So once you do that, actually sets in place, pops in like that. And there you go. You can set it on the stand. So that's really cool if you wanna display it like that, and it does swivel. All right, here's a little overview. What looks like complete, as you can tell, this did not hold, this little glue there. I haven't put this on yet because it's still detached from the base. I'm gonna put the engine back in, but if you wanna leave it out, that's what it looks like. Looks really cool if you wanna display it and have it like the commander's working on it. So, really cool. I love that they included that. There's even some writing here, like there's a manufacturer tag or something. So you can also get a base. If you've seen any of my other videos, you can get a base from Forces of Valor that goes all the way around. It's even got a little nameplate with certain war or battle that you can get. And it's like 20 bucks extra. So check that out as well. But thanks for watching, guys.